while Ron Paul has been campaigning less aggressively in South Carolina than he has in the other early voting states. But it's part of a larger plan taken straight from President Obama's 2008 campaign playbook. After posting strong finishes in Iowa and New Hampshire, the good doctor, who you weren't seeing right there, is now focusing on low-cost states holding caucuses that can yield a large number of delegates. I'm joined now by Doug Weed, senior advisor for the Ron Paul campaign. Nice to see you again, Doug. Thanks for joining me there in the rain. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. This is Ron Paul weather. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my. There you go. Well, I hope that works for you. But um, I, I want to talk about the primary today, which, you know, you, you're not likely to win it. I think you know that. You are effectively skipping Florida next week. How do you envision this caucus unless strategy? <laughs> unless it slows. Right. It snows, rather. How do you envision this playing out without the kind of national attention that these two contests would generate for you? Beautiful. It's turning out beautiful. You remember that great Agatha Christie movie and book, uh, uh, Ten Little Indians, and then there were none. Well, and then there were four. So, and now that Newt Gingrich is challenging Romney in South Carolina, our feeling is whoever wins, it doesn't matter. Just the fact that Newt Romney could cha challenge Newt, Newt, Newt Gingrich, sorry, that's Michelle Bachman channeled. But the fact uh, that Newt Gingrich could channel, uh, could <laughs> challenge Mitt Romney shows for us that it's a wide open race. It isn't over. Anything can happen. And there's still going to be money pumped into both campaigns. That's very good for us. Okay, let's play a little bit from that Thursday debate. Here's an exchange we're going to play between Ron Paul and Mitt Romney. We need to have someone outside Washington go to Washington. If we want people who spent their life and their career, most of their career in Washington, we have three people on the stage. Well, I take that back. We've got a doctor down here who spent most of his time in the, in the surgical suite. Well, not surgery, uh, the birthing suite. Uh, but, but I just, uh, I, think America, I think America has to make a choice as to whether we're going to send people who spent their life in Washington to go uh, represent our country or instead whether we're going to lead, have someone who goes who's been a leader in the private sector and knows how the real economy works at the grassroots level. Now, Doug, a lot of people interpreted that from Romney as being extremely deferential to Ron Paul. What should we make of that? Do you think he may be angling for Ron Paul's supporters eventually? I think that all of the candidates ought to. <laughs> There's no path to the White House uh, without Ron Paul. Uh, in the general election, they're going to need the vast numbers of young people. Most of the young people I worked all across Iowa, New Hampshire, and here in South Carolina tell me that four years ago they voted for Barack Obama if they voted. Some of them were too young to vote. So they're going to need him in the general. And it looks now, if Newt Gingrich makes a run here, uh, and he apparently has, whether he wins or not, he's made the run, that there's no way uh, that Newt Gingrich could win the nomination without Ron Paul. He's not even on the ballot. There are 564 delegates in that, Newt, that uh, Newt Gingrich and Rick Santorum are not even on the ballot, that Ron Paul is on the ballot. And the last poll, the last one of any of the major networks, the CNN poll, shows only two candidates beating Barack Obama, and that's Ron Paul and Mitt Romney. You don't, you don't hear much attention to that poll, but it's a reality we deal with. Well, I thank you for bringing it to our attention. Um, Ron Paul has not <laughs> attacked Romney very much. The overwhelming majority of his attacks have been aimed at Rick Santorum and Newt Gingrich. But Romney has been mostly spared. Why? I mean, do you think more attention would be focused on the Republican frontrunner uh, in, in any other circumstance? No, not, not necessarily so. We see it as a war of attrition, and we, we know the numbers are stacked against Mitt Romney. That's why this is so important with the dynamic that's happening right now. Mitt Romney's the elite candidate. He's the Goldman Sachs candidate. He's uh, the Obama of the Republican Party. He's going to be anointed like Ed Muskie was, like John Connolly was, like Rudolph Giuliani. If he doesn't make it through these first contests that the Republican insiders moved up for his benefit and arranged for his benefit, then it's wide open and he knows he's got to do it quickly. If we can uh, have some of the other candidates drop out, and five of them have, then we become the alternative candidate. And the polls show very clear clearly that maybe 30 percent or so of the voters want Romney. The other 70 percent want someone more conservative. So bottom line right now, are you guys just running a marathon and you're either just staying in it to potentially be a kingmaker at the end of it? 
Uh, yes and no. Yes, we're running a marathon, but no, we're still going after the nomination because uh, from our standpoint, a lot of these early contests moved up early. We knew we wouldn't do that well. We, we like the way the numbers are moving. We were uh, just a month ago 6% in South Carolina. Now we are the only evangelical Christian in the race, and we have more <laughs> donations from the military than all the other candidates combined, and we're the only veteran in the race. So we like the way the numbers are changing right now. And we're still going for it. Okay. Doug Weed, thank you then for taking time for us. We appreciate it. Thanks, See ya. Alex.